So my, my name is Timothy Wong. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an accountant. The reason why I'm coming to uh, give everybody a seminar is not that I'm an expert either. I'm just giving everybody a seminar because Access invited me as a serial entrepreneur that I've done this many times to just share my insights. So let me go to the next, next page, which is this disclaimer. As I said, I'm not an accountant, I'm not a lawyer. Helping people to incorporate a business is a service. And it's a service that you can actually buy that service out there. And I'm not part of that industry. So today the discussion is nothing involves selling you anything at all. I'm not even related. I'm just a zero entrepreneur and a business owner. All right. And I've done it many times. I have uh, offices in the uh, US and Asia and Canada, of course. I myself am mainly based in Florida, although I do travel around. So let's jump right in. So before you're thinking starting your own business, have you thought of buying other people's business or businesses? Anyone? I'm just going to look at the chat window. Have you thought of buying somebody else's business? You drive around the street, you see restaurant on the left, on the right hand side, there's a hobby shop. You don't have to start your own business. You can actually buy somebody else's business. I know a lot of people have not thought about that. Everybody very quiet. That's okay. I'm going to warm it up. We're going to talk about more stuff. And oh, there's a Q&A. Let me see. No? Okay, thank you. I, I pick up the right window now. I'm seeing it. The sun said, no, it's expensive. Yeah, yeah, it's expensive. And make sure that you hold that photo, all right? Let me explain to you why it's expensive. Manjeet. Buying takes more money. Yep, so you're on the same track. You're thinking buying other business cost you more money. Yes. Um, why don't I segue into why you say buying other people's business is expensive? Anyone? Anyone come up with a reason why you think? You haven't even asked for the price. Yeah, it involves money. But you start your own business, it will cost you some money too, right? Even very basic of the basic, if you have a retail business, you have to rent a space, right? You have to buy some furniture, you have to stock something if you're a retail business. If you're doing online selling, you have to own some stock, otherwise you have nothing to sell. So almost any business, every business involves some money. Okay, so Meiji said, because it's a new immigrant, we have limited access to funds. Yes. You know what? That's so true. If you're a new immigrant, there's not a lot of uh, funds available that you can fold around, 100%. Um, Eileen, why I cannot see any chat? My chat is disabled. I don't know. <laughs> you should be able to see the chat. Maybe it's just a different window you need to click on Zoom. Okay, so Basan said it is cheaper if self-employed. All right, I'm glad, that, uh, I'm glad that everybody is engaging. So let me tell you why people have this impression that if you want to buy somebody else's business, you will feel that it would cost you more money. Actually, it depends. So remember earlier I was saying you're driving down the street and on the left, there's a restaurant. On the right, there's a hobby shop. Now we are October 2022. So the pandemic's been almost three years, two and a half already. If you recall, you drove down the street, March, April, 2020. So we rewind the clock two and a half years ago. If you drove down the street, March, April, May, 2020, you stop the car, you walk into the restaurant and you say, hey, are you selling? Maybe, maybe they're selling. And they will even tell you, don't worry about the furniture and fixtures. Uh, you can take them for free. Am I right? I'm going to look at the chat window. Think about that. It's a matter of timing. What I want to explain to you is it's a matter of timing. I definitely recall in 2020, there are lots of restaurant business owners were selling the business. They are actually giving it to you because they want you to take over the lease. L-E-A-S-E. -E. It's the lease that they owe the landlord monthly rent. Okay? At the earlier part of the pandemic, the, the business owners were not too sure. The business becomes zero. That part is sure. Business becomes zero. But they have obligations. They have to pay rent. 
they have to pay a little bit of a uh, little bit of bills. If they retain some employees, they have to pay them something. So they, you know what, I'd rather sell. And by the way, the furniture and the fittings is all yours. Don't worry about it. Just keep right. So it's a matter of time. And on the right hand side, so left hand side, the restaurant. On the right hand side, there's a hobby shop. If you just walk in there and say it's the business owner here, and you can have a chat. Again, it's timing, right? If you go in there, March, April, May, two thousand and twenty, it's a good discussion. It's a good discussion. And even if the hobby shop won't hurt as worse as a restaurant business owner, maybe it's open to talk about partnership, right? Uh, you know what? They said business is tough. We don't know when the uh, pandemic is going to come out. Right now, this rolling lockdown is definitely bad for business. So he might be willing to talk about a partnership. You can inject some money into the business and you become a part owner. So you don't have to actually start your own business. I'm going to pause here to take a look at the chat window. Am I correct? It's a matter of time and who you talk to. Am I right? Yep. But now we're going to come back to reality. We are now October 2022. COVID is still here, but it's more or less gone. Uh, I, you know what? I got to be careful when I say that because I caught COVID three weeks ago. It wasn't fun. So COVID is almost gone. It's still here. But as far as the normal people treat COVID, we kind of treat it as a secondary thought. We don't worry about it too much. We'll go to restaurant, we go shopping, we'll kind of do the normal things. We are back to normal somewhat. Therefore, now, if you got off your car, you go to the left-hand side, you go to the restaurant business, the restaurant owner may not have time to talk to you. And even if they talk to you, they will give you a bigger price. And that bigger price is what I call a multiple. A multiple. Anyone knows what a multiple is? Anyone look at the chat window? No. Okay, so what is a multiple? So I walk in the restaurant. <clears throat> now the restaurant is back to normal. It's filling up with uh, pat patrons. They are paying. And the business owner no longer feel that there's no money coming in. It's almost dead. They want to sell to you. That's no longer the case, right? The business owner of the restaurant is now making money. So for the business owner of the restaurant to sell you the business, the restaurant owner will only make out advantage for himself is to multiply the business either by revenue or by profitability, a multiple. So let me give you an example. I'll give you a very simple example. Let's say the restaurant business only make $100 a year just to make the easy number. Otherwise, if I call it a very big number, we won't, we won't digest. Let's say the restaurant make $100 a year. And the business owner say, well, Tim, if you want to buy it, no problem. But I need $500. So the multiple is five, okay? The reason why is you are basically paying him, the business owner, the restaurant owner, the profitability of the next five years. And for him to give you the keys and say, okay, this is now yours. You run the show. Thank you very much. I'm moving out. Anyway, anyone, anyone get, everyone gets it, right? The multiple. You got it? You need to give the business owner a multiple. If you don't give them a multiple, why are they selling it to you? The business is making money year after year. Only because you're giving them a multiple, then they say, okay, fine. You're giving me money forward. And thank you very much. I'm giving you keys. You okay with that concept? I'm just going to look at the uh, chat window. And Tim, since I think some people were getting confused about the Q&A box versus the chat window, I've opened the oh, chat window now as well. There's a Q&A box. Let me see. I'm going to look at the... Okay, now it looks like everyone's... Uh... All right. So there's a Q&A box. Okay, so Manji said yes. He understands the, uh, the multi. All right. So every industry, so I'm just making it up. I said, if you walk into the restaurant, the restaurant has business, the owner wants to sell to you and it's giving you a multiple of five, all right? So $100 becomes $500. If you're willing to pay five years of his profit ahead, he said, fine, here are the keys. You can, you can take over, right? If you get off the car, you go to the right-hand side, you got into the hobby shop. The hobby shop owner said, it may give you a 3X multiple. So the, assume, assuming they also make 100 bucks a year, They'll say, I'll sell it to you for 300 okay? So it's a matter of timing and the, the nature of the business 
and this is uh, recognized and multiple. Every industry is a little different. And also, there's some business at that current time you walk into, uh, you walk into the company and ask for whether they're interested to sell, they may not be making money. And if they don't make money, it may not be expensive. A lot of businesses actually have debt, DEBT, they have obligations. And if the business itself has not been making money, not profitable, and they have debt, you'll be surprised. They may pay you to take the business. Okay? So absolutely think about, you don't have to start your own business. You can buy other people's business, and it may not be expensive. It's a matter of timing and their financial situation. All right, let's go to uh next slide. Why I say you can buy other people's business. I know that people don't just drive along the street, get off the car and start talking to business owners. Uh, I do want to sell. I know people don't do that. That's not natural. However, have you ever thought of, you don't need to be an Elon Musk. You don't need to be a Jeff Bezos. You just need to buy. You want, you want to be a Elon, you just buy Tesla. You want to be Jeff. You just buy Amazon. Have you thought about that? Anyone? Isn't that very cool if you have Elon and Jeff working for you? Why not? Think about that, right? For a moment, if you don't want to start your own business, you can just buy the stock and share. So many years ago, we are talking about quite a while ago, if you feel that Elon is a future, future technology king and a thought leader, you could have just said, I'm not worried about Tesla, how much it will be in a year. I'm investing for the long term. So you just buy into Tesla and wait and look at Tesla graph, right? It's way up. And if you buy into Jeff Bezos a long time ago and you say, I'm not worried about it. I believe the man and oh, boom, it's way up, right? Even Meta is way up. And by the way, if you want to buy Meta, Meta today is only $99. So it's a lot cheaper today. So why not have other people work for you? Uh, Majid said that's too big a dream. Not at all. You know what? The revolution of the past two and a half years of pandemic, you can now buy fractional shares. Fractional shares. So let's just for the round number, if you're $100 to invest, which is not very much, and today, 20 April, October, you can buy one share of Meta. I think Meta is trading around 99 to 100 bucks today. If you got a hundred bucks, you can buy one share of Amazon. It's trading around 101, okay? Tesla, you can buy about half. It's trading 220 bucks. You can buy about half. Anybody here have heard about fractional shares? Just waiting for chair window. Yep. So fractional shares. And you can accumulate as you move along. So, so Vasan, for you, you can buy a hundred bucks. It's not a huge number. You can buy half, uh, half a share of Tesla. And then you can accumulate because let's say every, every week you're going to save a hundred bucks. Then you can just every week you put a hundred bucks in there. So you start buying half a share and then one share, 1.5 shares. Personally, I do not do that. Okay. Personally, I do not do that, but I heard the younger generation, the young people, they tell me you can. You can accumulate shares one share at a time, all right? And you are betting, it's not a joke, it's a little bit of a gamble. You are betting that these companies, because they are great companies, otherwise you won't buy them, they will do well. And because if they will do well, in general, the stock price will reflect the higher price. So overall, over a time horizon, you will make money. What is profitable? So, and uh, it's just very small character. So, what profitable share? Um, okay, can you type it again? Because I don't understand the question. What is profitable share? Can you type it again? Enrique, Enrica. Okay, I'll give it a shot. What is a profitable share? If you buy a share, it's $100 and, and you don't look at it for a year. Next year, you look at it again, it's now 120 Then you make 20 bucks. You haven't done anything. All you have done is you park, P-A-R-K. You park money in your trading account and you're hoping for the best. There's always a possibility that October 2022, you spend a hundred bucks on Meta or you spend a hundred bucks on Amazon, you bought one share. 
One year later, you didn't look at it for a year. One year later, 2023 October, you check it again. There's always a possibility those things have gone down to 80. Then you are losing, theoretically, you're losing 20 bucks, okay? Theoretically. The reason why I said theoretically is because you are holding share, you're not holding cash. So as long as you have not sold the share, then you haven't lost money yet, okay? But if you have to sell it, then okay, you, you will be realizing your loss. Then she said, I bought SE at one. What is SE? Now at 47. What is SE? What is the full oh, C limit? I don't know what C limit is. I don't know everything. There are thousands of companies, but thanks for sharing the uh, example, right? So Majid bought SE at 108. It came down all the way from 368. So by the time it got to 108, looks like good price. But now it is $47. So Majid has racked up paper loss. He hasn't lost money yet, hasn't lost any real money yet, but he has racked up some paper losses. Now, when you think about being a business owner, you it is very hard for us to dream of building a company that has $23 billion of market cap, right? It's very difficult for us to dream of one day we'll get to $23 billion. But you can, you just need to buy uh, one share, starting from one share. Then you become a part owner, no matter how small, right? You become a part owner of a $23 billion market cap company. Uh, I'm just telling you a different way of thinking, I think, all right? Anyone heard of PE ratio? PE ratio. Anyone? Okay, PE ratio. So PE ratio is price earning ratio. So when you in, invest in stock and shares, they show you cur current price, 50 to be high and low. Uh, is it a money making company? Do they give you dividend? Da 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 da, right? A whole bunch of stuff. And one of the things in the whole bunch of stuff they gave you is called PE ratio. Yeah, market price, net profit. Yeah. So what P-E ratio is, is if, let's say the P-E ratio says 10, just going to make a simple number. Let's say it says 10. A P-E ratio of 10 means if you buy the stock price as of today, the P-E ratio is 10. That means if everything kind of the same, hunky-dory, everything fine, there's no nuclear war, there's no more COVID, right? No strange situation. Then in 10 years time, you get your money back. That's basically what P-E ratio is. The reason why I uh, draw out the PE ratio thing is, in this earlier part of the seminar, I tell everybody, you do not necessarily need to start your own company. You can bet on somebody else, and that somebody else can, can run the company for you. You become a very, very small shareholder, so you have no control, but you are just hoping that you bet on the right horse, the right company, and that right company will bring you money. And because once you park PARK, you park the money. As I said, you're not uh, flipping the shares, right? Flipping shares is a totally different, uh, totally different game. If you're just placing your faith in a business that you think will do good, you buy the stock, you just park the money there, and you're hoping that at some point when you need the money, you liquidate, you're going to make a profit, you need to look at a PE ratio. If the PE ratio is very high, then you are only hoping that the volatility would take the stock price higher, right? You're not looking for long-term, long-term because long-term is very unpredictable. For example, like Tesla. Tesla in the past two years, the PE ratio is in the hundreds, right? What does that mean when you have hundreds? Anything over hundred, that means if you just wait for the company to do its normal thing and return you the investment and all that, it will not be in your lifetime, all right? So in other words, Companies with very high PE ratio, you better think about it. It may not be investable. Okay, so why do you want to start your business? I'm going to look at the uh, chat window. Why you want to start a business? Can anyone give me some? Okay, I was told the other way around. Imagine you were told the other way around. Financial freedom, okay. Financial freedom is... It's a good idea. At some point, right? You want financial freedom. Be your own boss, yeah? You don't have to be bossed around by somebody, yeah? That's also a potentially good idea. What else? Mm, 
out of 20 people, I only got like three answers. Come on. Helping people. Yeah, that's a noble cause. Helping people. If you can start a business, if you can have a business that can help people, great. If your business uh, don't directly help people, if you spawn the profit, you can also use the profit to help people because it will be tax deductible. Yeah, work with your own terms and read, yeah, 100%. And if you want to only work a three day work week, absolutely you can. You want to be creative, expanding the business, yes, you can, because nobody is telling you what to do, you can run your creativity juice. Uh, choose your team, yeah, you would have the ability to choose who you want to work with. Uh, but that sex way into another thing. Once you become a uh, 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 maybe sizable business that you have a, a whole bunch of employees you'll find out choosing your team dealing with human beings sometimes is a headache because uh, Canadian employment law favors the employee so I am an employer so I can tell you employment law in Ontario favors the employee you have to be very careful choosing your team Okay, so Manjit said, oh, Manjit is coming back on heading on the RP duration. Let's take a look at what opinion he's sharing. So he said it was told by an expert that higher PE ratio means that they are financially better and have better investor trust. Mm, the reason why I, I want to, I want to uh, add some more words to it. The reason why I, out of all these statistics, 52 week high and low PE ratio and all that, I pick PE ratio is to give everybody a, a very crude and basic understanding if you don't want to start your own business but you feel that a certain business is good for example ev electric vehicle right if you think a certain business is good but you you can't start it it's just too big right capital intensive you bet on the business and what would you be looking for if you put a hundred bucks on it what does that mean and and you say you know what i'm not flipping the shares i don't need the money tomorrow i'm just going to park it I trust the direction and I trust that whoever was the leader was a smart guy. Let him run the show. I can sleep in there for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And I just want to be part of that business that crank out good results. And that's why the PE ratio is important because you don't live hundreds of years. You probably have a 30, 40 year of working life and then later on you have to take money out. So your horizon would somewhere between your investment horizon it will be somewhere between 20 to 40, 50 years. So in that 20 to 40, 50 years time, you have to take money out. When you take the money out, if your PE ratio is over 100, theoretically, you are gambling a lot. Because even if everything is hunky-dory, no nuclear war, no major conflict, no COVID, no disaster, da 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 you have to wait over 100 years for the company to return your capital, right? The reason why the expert told Manjit that don't worry about P ratio, it, it can be in the hundreds, don't worry about it, and yes, depends, right? If you look at Tesla, Tesla's P ratio were, were in the uh, hundreds, but it was still going up. It's because people are buying it, it's like a cult, right? They're buying it. And the mentality changes if you invest that way. You are, if you're investing that way, that means you're just buying on the fact that I'm buying it 28th of October and I'll be flipping it next week. And if it goes up, it's a great thing. I don't care whether it's an EV business. I don't care whether it's run by Elon Musk, right? It really doesn't matter. I'm just flipping it. So it deviates from the investment angle. Remember the investment angle is you're going to park your money. You're not going to touch it for 10, 20, 30 years, right? And you hope that at any one point that you need to touch the money. You check the price and it's higher than the price you pay. That's where the PE ratio comes. Audrey said you get all the benefits of your creativity. Yeah. And by the way, I don't want to frighten people buying businesses with high PE ratio. Sometimes you buy the momentum, right? As I said, you buy it in October, you sell it in December. And if the momentum is on your side, the PE ratio does not factor in. It can be hundreds. For example, you can buy... I think Amazon's uh, PE ratio is also very high, right? But you don't worry about it. It's run by Jeff Bezos. So you don't worry about it. And by the way, you're not flipping it. All right. So uh, be your own boss. Be your own boss is a popular reason why you want to start your business. But I want to uh, tell everybody, at a very high level, be your own boss is a good idea. 
but your own boss can also be a bad idea because I'm speaking from experience, right? Business sometimes goes up, sometimes goes down. And if COVID comes, your business becomes zero. It's very bad, right? Especially, for example, like COVID. I'll give you an example. COVID, when the COVID first came, they shut down travel. The world came to a halt. Everybody shut down travel. Not only you can't go to work, you can't go to the airport, nothing. One of my businesses, we do a lot of business with Japan, and they shut down everything. My business becomes zero. Now, if you are employee, so you don't own the business, you just work for a business. What do you got to lose? You're going to sit at home, you don't have to go to work, your paycheck is still coming in, right? Although it's a little risky because at the earlier part of the pandemic, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know whether the pandemic is going to be short or it's going to be long. But you know that at that particular moment in time, in March 2022, your paycheck is still coming in. You have no risk. Going into April, maybe your paycheck is still coming in if your boss haven't done anything to it. So there's no risk. But in March 2022, when the lockdown came, business becomes zero right away, right? For a lot of businesses. Remember restaurant? Boom, it goes from X to zero. No more business. And who is owning the risk? Who is not sleeping at night? It's the business owner. Am I right? As an employee, you don't feel it right away. You still got paycheck coming in until your boss tells you, you got to talk about it, right? And gives you an alternative arrangement. Otherwise, why are you so worried? <laughs> the paycheck coming, right? Business owner worries because business goes to zero. I can tell you most businesses, they have some reserves. So when business goes to zero, that's okay. It's not end of the world. Boss won't want to cut everything either because they know Boss, if the boss cuts everything, then what happens is COVID, if COVID only asks for two weeks, then it is a disaster, right? If everything got turned off, I fired and laid off everybody, but COVID only lasts for two weeks, then I'm just giving myself a lot of work, right? So usually businesses, they have reserves. They don't have to cut everything. They, they, they can continue to do the paycheck. They can continue to pay the bills. Although business equal to zero, they still keep the lights on, right? Hoping that uh, COVID is only going to be a flash in the pan. All right. So if you own a business, it's good. You have control, but you also own all the risk. And if the risks are hurting you, then it is hurting. It's just how much reserve you have so that you can weather it out. And maybe sometimes government comes to the rescue. Okay. Let me take a look at the uh, chat window. Versace said, how do you decide on investment? If on one side, P is high, not great. On the other side, it's run by a reliable person. Wow, you know what? I can't, I can't advise people on investing because in specifically for the stock market, I am an overall loser. So uh, if I give people advice on investment, I, I'm not too sure whether it's any good. I do study a lot, but overall, my record, I've been overall loser. That's, that's the problem. Uh, but he said, yes, all profit, all risk. Yeah, in general, the more you're willing to risk, potentially more profit, okay? The less you're willing to less risk, potentially less profit. That's always like that. Uh, Slavica said, depending also on personality type, some people have entrepreneur spirit and they're ready to take risks. Yes, if you are entrepreneur by nature, you're ready to take risk. And one thing I want to say way one thing, in Canada, we are a country with a lot of small businesses. I got to specify the word small. We are a country with a lot of small businesses. And the country, Canada, wants to, at every level, whether you're federal level or provincial level, we want to encourage business uh, entrepreneurs to start business. And there are also some ways to help you start your business. Early in the seminar, some of you said it, it takes money. And interesting enough, if you go talk to your bank, you talk to your bank manager, there's something called SDL, Small Business Loan. The government would empower the banks to loan you money. And by the way, when I say they loan you money, the secret of the business is the government has no expectation for you to return the money. So I'm going to repeat. It's called small business loan. So technically, they're not giving you free money. They're loaning you money. 
but the government has no expectation that you return it. So it's basically free money. But you can't just say, oh, that's great. I go line up in the bank. I need some free money. How about give me $20,000? I want to do this. And, and you told me you don't have expectation for me returning the money. That's not how it works. That's why you need to go to the bank, talk to the bank manager. And if the bank manager is willing to talk to you, and that's the, the, the other part, right? They, they may not be willing to talk to you. If they're willing to talk to you, you have to work with them to come up with something called business plan. So you got to tell them, this is what I wanted to do. This is the market research. This is how much business I'm expecting. This is my demographics of the market I'm going to address. How much growth, da, 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 da. It's a lot of stuff, okay? And if the bank buys into your business plan, they may, they may be able to get you a small business loan, which the advantage is government has no expectation you return the money. So it said, wow, that's great. Everybody should be lining up. Now the rules might have changed because I have never in my life obtained a small business loan. I'm just lucky. I came to this country with money. So I'm an exception. I don't need the business loan. But I was told that uh, the government ain't that dumb. The government is going to say, if I give you a hundred bucks, you at least have to, to spend 20 bucks. I need to see your skin in the game, right? I don't want you to come in totally empty pocket and I got zero and government give you a hundred. That's, that's according to what I've heard. That's not how that works. The government will be happy to give you a hundred, but they want to see 20, 20 bucks from your pocket. So at least you are investing something. All right. The remaining 80 bucks, if you lost all of it, once again, I'm telling you five times, they don't have expectation and there's no penalty, all right? They don't have expectation, you return the 80 bucks and you will not have any penalty. Okay. The loan needs collateral. No, small business loan, you do not need collateral. Uh, at least as far as I have heard, if the government agrees to give you loan, you do not need collateral. A lot of times people thought about collateral would be you own a house, your house will be a collateral. But the small business owned by the government, they don't tie you to they don't tie you to your house. As I said, if you lose it, that's that's okay. It's government money. They don't care. They want to encourage you to start your business and give you something to help, right? Okay, so what businesses you think you can start quite easily? Anyone? I'm going to look at the chat window. Uh, money support from government starting a business. Yes. And Norika, I told you already, you have to talk to the bank manager, okay? Talk to the bank manager. If they're willing to talk to you, they have money. And the government give you money through the bank. So you don't directly talk to the government, okay? I'm glad that you, you asked that question and it draws it out. You don't need to directly talk to the government. You talk to the bank. The government empowers the bank to give you free money. Okay. Okay. So yeah, Uber. Uber is a is a business. Absolutely. Uh, Uber. You need to start with buying a car. Personal services. Yes, you can do personal services. Help people to do stuff, and you charge them a fee. Trading. Yeah, trading. Uh, since some of you are from some other places. You may be able to find stuff that are very unique from the place where you came from and you import into this country. Uh, Kevin said, tech business, consulting, yes. One of the easiest way to uh, start your own business is you just help people code, C-O-D-E, just do software. And there's very little cost. You need a computer, right? You need a decent computer, very little cost. You don't need to stock anything. Okay. Dua said, when, when could we start applying for small business loan? Does the company need to be established? No, no need. Just go to talk to your bank manager. Okay. So next time when you go to the bank, don't make a special trip. You don't have to. But next time when you go to the bank, you may as well go knock on. So there's people lining up to talk to the teller, right? You can also talk to the teller. And when you get to the front and say, I want to talk to the bank manager. So that's method number one. Method number two, you walk into your bank. By the way, you have to walk into your bank branch because if you just walk into any general bank, they won't talk to you. You got to talk to the bank manager at your own bank branch. Okay, then you can walk in there, knock on anybody's door, and said, "I am, I am with this branch. 
I want to talk to a bank manager about small business law. And they will say, yeah, fine, just sit here. We'll find somebody to talk to you. Okay? So that's the starting point. And because remember, earlier I was telling you, bank manager may not want to talk to you. So if they don't talk to you, that's a broken link. That's why there are businesses out there. They help you to write the business plan. So that's another service. They will charge you for it, okay? They will help you write the business plan, and they will also help you connect to a willing to talk bank manager, okay? So that's why they charge you for it. Now, for me, I walk into the bank. They, they love to talk to me, all right? But I know that many of you are newcomers. You can't expect, you just walk into the bank, you thought that you're somebody. Sometimes that's not the case, all right? Bellamy starting a t-shirt brand. Yeah, absolutely. You can combine maybe your artwork or you can sign up some artists and they can put it on the t-shirt. You don't have to sell it on very high volume, right? You just need to make sure that you have enough profit to cover costs and a little bit you can put in the pocket. And that's a starting point. And over a longer period of time, you build a brand name. Okay. So let's see. Franchise, candle, candle business, yes, you can do that, but you need to either manufacture here, make in Canada. By the way, when you make when you put a label, make in Canada, that automatically sells for a higher price. It is it is automatic, all right? Most of the stuff we 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 bring up, we look at the bottom. What does it say? Anyone? Most of the things you buy and you, you take a look at the bottom, it says made in. Most of that it says made in China. So that says a baseline, right? So for the same thing, you pick it up, it says made in Canada, automatically you sell for a higher price. Automatic, although it's exactly the same thing, all right? However, it's exactly the same thing, made in Canada, you sell for a higher price. You have to make sure that the stuff you're selling has higher quality, am I right? So, so that's, the, that's the hurdle you, you have to jump. The price gap is automatic. It's just you have to make sure you produce a better product. Uh, tutoring, yeah, tutoring also have very little, uh, very little investment, nothing to stock. You might have to get yourself a car so they can drive around to to reach your students, or if you don't need to reach the students, the students reach you, then the cost is even lower, right? You just need to have a room in your house or in your condo that you set up for whatever you're tutoring. Okay, so thank you very much. Let me give you some suggestion. Okay, so you can do import export. Don't forget, you can export as well, right? So I know a lot of people come here, they, they thought of import because they know what their country can, can produce and they can also see whether the price is good or price is bad and what have you. They think of import. You can also think of export. If you see things that you, you can see here that can do very well in your home country, you can also think of export. That's also another business. I know a lot of people do import. Not a lot of people do export. Now that you're in a high-tech country, maybe you can think about that. Many of the ideas we do here, they are reusable at the place where you come from. You can also sell things to consumers through Amazon, eBay, or Kijiji. You have to stock certain things. Sometimes you don't have to stock. There's, there's a, there, there are ways to do things on Amazon. You don't have to stock, but you have to drill down, okay? Selling services. A local geography, you can sell services to people like tutoring, right? You can sell it over Kijiji. Sell IT solutions. I was talking about coding for people, right? You just need a good computer. Then you can do coding. Selling consulting services in anything you are good at. That's also a small business idea. Develop applications and sell them on Play Store and App Store if you are good at mobile application. Uh, but this it will not make you a living because most of the apps are selling for a dollar or two, right? Ten bucks, five bucks, three bucks. It's hard to make a living. But on the side, if you want to. Open a lo on location retail. So right now, there's still a lot of retail space vacant. You can go to a strip mall, okay? Go to a strip mall. And if you see a strip mall with a couple of open locations, uh, free. So the shop's been vacant, there's nobody there. You can ask to see the location, well, if the landlord is there, but if the landlord is not there, you want to contact the uh, street mall's owner. Don't be surprised that they give you three months free. 
if you're willing to sign a contract with them and rent their place, they will give you a couple months free because they, they have a couple of open spaces. They need to rent it to somebody. And if you're interested to rent, they'll be happy to give it to you for free for a few months. So you, it's all timing, right? So we are now still in this uh, post-COVID situation. That's why retail is not completely back to normal. And you have, a, if you can, if you can think of a retail idea, you're in a good position to negotiate. Uh, you can cook it. You know what? In the past two and a half years, there's something called a ghost kitchen. What is a ghost kitchen? Before you used to have to have a restaurant, you have to back as a big kitchen, all your utensils, everything, right? But today, you don't have to. You can actually cook in your own home kitchen. And you let people uh, Uber your food out, right? So what's the difference for the Uber driver to pick up food from a restaurant at the back? Or they pick it up from uh, your condo or pick it up from your house? No difference. So you can now operate a ghost kitchen. Again, you probably won't make yourself very rich, but it's a business. I know people doing that. Okay, I'm just gonna catch up on the uh, chat window, okay? Okay, so that's all good. Yeah, creating business plans. Samina is absolutely right. Creating business plan. You can't go to the bank and tell them I want to do this and that. They probably won't, won't want to talk to you. That's why there are some businesses out there, they are charging you a fee, but they know the steps. They will help you build an idea into a framework put it into a business plan. And the better thing is because they know how to write those business plans, the business plans resulting from this fee-based service is ready for the bank. And the bank will probably say, okay. And remember, the bank really doesn't care. It's government money, right? So the, gov uh, the government will, well, the government actually don't give money to the bank. It's just an I O I O U, right? The, gov the, the bank is a forerize to loan you $20,000. And that's that's basically it. I, I can't be you can't I can't further simplify that. It. It's pretty easy. Purchase real estate, rent away, collect rent, and do it under a business entity. A few months before it was hard, but now real estate prices are coming down. So maybe. But nevertheless, compared to when I first came here to Canada, I came here 30 years ago. This is very doable because 30 years ago real estate ain't that expensive. It wasn't cheap, but ain't that expensive. Now, very expensive. It's not so easy to do this again because even the price have come down, still very expensive. Before I go to the next slide, any questions on this one? No? So let's jump into how to incorporate, how to incorporate in Ontario, okay? First of all, we are a country that we don't see corruption. So you don't have to pay anybody to set up company. There's no red tape, okay? No red tape. You want to set up company, go ahead. Nobody is going to give you trouble, okay? Nobody is going to give you a hurdle to jump, uh, jump over or tell you you need a permit here and there and they, they force you to pay under the table. No, no need, okay? Uh, Kevin said, IT solution business, you just need to advertise what you can, right? For example, if you're a good Java coder, then you just need to advertise to typically the job agencies and tell them how good you are in Java coding and what have you done before. And they will farm, F-A-R-M. They will farm out your resume and then they will pick up jobs. They will give it to you, you code it. So you, there's hardly any cost to you. You already own a computer, so there's not any, any cost, additional cost. And you code, you code it and then they pay you. So Ontario now recommends online registration, okay? So they used to be in person, which I've done many times. I like in person because I'll just be going to the office in downtown University Avenue. There will be some government workers helping me checking my forms, make sure everything is good. They put a job, boom, I'm done, right? But now it is, it is all online. So you don't go to an office and stand in line and wait for a government worker to look at your stuff, okay? It is now online. So you go to this Ontario page, business start. The page is very well laid out. It shows you step one, step two, step three, step four. So you basically follow the step. You don't need much uh, explanation. But I just want to tell you, before you go uh, fill in the form, start your business online, there are a number of things you needed to do as background check, right? 
So if you want to start your own company, you need to come up with a company name. And interesting enough, a lot of company names have already been taken. So you better do company name search, and it is called N-U-A-N-S. You need to do this search, okay? It's a search that charge you 10, 15 bucks. It's not expensive, but it will run through a government database to make sure that whatever name that you're thinking of has not been registered. Well, again, as I said, a lot of names that you thought of, they have already been taken. But that's also this 10, 15 bucks, right? You, you got to find that name that you like and has not been taken. And it's your responsibility to make sure that by the time you register the company, you're not clashing with other people's names. The government is not responsible for it, okay? That's why you need to do the search first. You also need to Google around, you need to Facebook, you need to make sure that you do ad adequate search for even domain name, right? You need to have something.ca, something.com. It is your responsibility to make sure that whatever name you come out of, they are all open, all right? It's not government responsibility. What is a bilingual name? Now, if you're willing to come up with a French version of your company name, you also need to do the French search. Now, I didn't bother because I just did not bother. But if you want to also come up with a French name, you might want to do a French search, okay? Let's say there's always a possibility that you do not want to call it a company name. You don't have an idea. You can call number companies. We call them number companies. So you can register a company with just a number. It's just a number, okay? So at that point, you have not decided what the company name is. So you park it, P-A-R-K. You park it on the side. But you say, you know what? I can't slow myself down. I don't want to slow myself down because I haven't thought about a company name. Then no worries. Go ahead, register a number corporation. It's just a number. And later on, you can change, okay? But you can still register a number corporation and operate your business on a number corporation. Totally legal, nothing wrong. Uh, here, what is this slide for? Yeah, it's, it's, it's just the search, okay? N-U-A-N-S, you can come and search, okay? And it, it charges you $10, $15. It's not a huge amount of money. So you do a search, as you say, as you can see, you set a region, you set a city, you put a name in, and the government's gonna go through the database and you can see what companies have already been registered. So obviously you're looking for names that has not been registered yet. I was already talking about it. Don't forget your .com, .ca domain name, all right? Make sure that whatever name you have, the name in domain name space is also available. Popular starting points, you can go to GoDaddy, everybody knows, I don't have to tell you. Um, you can also go to WordPress and Wix because they not only give you domain name, they can also help you set up your first web page and they charge you a monthly fee. It's only a few dollars. It's not a huge amount of money. And you can also consider different variation of your name. It doesn't need to be .com. I know that you already knew. Uh, price is usually pretty cheap. In order to load you onto their customer list, they may give you a discount for the first year. So earlier I was telling you, you go to this place, start your own Ontario business registry. It is actually very well laid out very well laid out. The steps are all there. Um, the one of the things you needed to do is if you have decided that you're going to set up your company ABC, right? ABC company. One of the things you needed to do is to get the uh, one time one key ID. This is a government thing. You need to get a one key ID. So it's, uh, it's an extra step, but you need, only need to do it once. So after you get your one key ID, you, you filled it in. And it's just a manual, very manual process. Once you filled it in, you receive an email. It, it, you pay the $300 one-time fee and you have your company name, article of incorporation, and you filled in the rest of the details. That's it. So make sure that you remember, this is an intermediate step you can't skip. You have to get this ID. Once you get the ID, you want to be a corporation, $300. And you do these three things, pretty straightforward. Uh, before I go further away, I'm talking about a corporation. So a corporation is not you, it's a company name, right? If you first started out, 
uh, just doubling in doing your own business, you're doing small volume, right? So the transactions are small, a few hundred bucks, a few thousand bucks, on and off, on and off. Sometimes you have business, sometimes you have no business. Then you don't need to set up a company at all. You will just add this uh, earnings, occasional earnings, a few hundred here, a few hundred there, right? You just add it all up and add it to the tax form. You do not need to set up company. So people may say, well, at what point you need to set up company? Let's say you're going to make $100,000, $200,000, half a million dollars. So these are much bigger numbers, right? Then it makes sense for you to pay $300 and set your company up, okay? So is there a lower limit? Is it 100K? Is it 50K? Is it 25K? Then you need to set up company. From a taxation angle, I'll tell you, if you make hundreds of thousands, so 100,000, 150,000, 200, yeah. From a taxation angle, you'll be better off to set up company because then you can expense everything, all right? But as you're lower, you have 50, 50K, 30K, the government suggests that if you're already new, you're going to make 30K plus, you also need to set up a company because you need to start charging people GST, PST, HST, okay? You need to charge people sales tax. But again, if you're below 30K, you're just picking up jobs here and there, a few hundred dollars of transaction, a few thousand dollars of transaction on and off, then you don't need. Manji said, can we claim HST without registering? Okay, you, you need to, because when you when you claim HST, what you're, what you're basically telling the government is, is in the process of doing business, I collected some HST, but I also spent some money in order to do the business on your HST. So there's, a, there's an offset situation, right? I collected some, but I also spent some. So that's why you claim HST. It is okay if you spend more HSD than you collect, then you end up with a refund check, right? So that's okay. However, if you cannot demonstrate you have a business and you cannot demonstrate that you have a legit reason that you have spent some money, you can't claim HSD. Uh, the, the, the PDF, I can send it to uh, Sahim Samina. Promote your business. If you want to promote the business, now, first of all, let me jump to the business permit. Most businesses, you don't need permit, okay? And if you want to promote your stuff in an exhibition, in a fair, by all means, okay? By all means. All right. So here, I'm just going to show you a few more fields in the uh, article in, in corporation. Remember this thing? Now it's online. Before you go to line up with a government department, you filled it in, they look at it, everything is good, they give you a job. But now it's online. So you filled it in, same thing. You have to fill in your company name. You have to uh, give it a legit office address. Don't give it a post box, give it an office address. And if you don't have an uh, office address and you don't want to use your home address, you can go to a shopper's drug mart or a UPS or Canada Postal and rent their address, okay? Uh, you have to put number of directors. And in my opinion, don't put too many, okay? Don't put too many. You can always add directors later. But when you first start that out, don't put too many. It's just too complicated. And there are a number of things you filled in. They're not too difficult. You can actually pre-fill the form. You can download the form from the web. And then you know what the fields are. You can fill it in first before you go to the online thing. I almost run out of time. Let me make sure that are there any questions. And if you have questions, by the way, you can call the government. The government here are very friendly. You can call the government. There's no problem.